Hi, I'm Julia. Welcome to Julia Lives. Today, I'm going to tell you all about my experience as a self-published author. That's right. I'm a published author. I wrote this book right here. Maybe drinking will help. Later in the video, I'll tell you a little bit about the process of writing the book and what the book is about. But first, I want to share with you all the things that helped me along the way and even some of the mistakes that I made. I'll also tell you exactly, right down to the penny, how much it cost me to self-publish this book. I enrolled in a self-publishing course from a book publishing company called Hay House. It's more of a metaphysical type of book publishing company, but that didn't matter. Their, their CEO, Reed Tracy, led the course. It was free, totally free. I think there were six videos total that walked you through step by step and truly I used everything I needed from that video to self-publish my book. It was awesome. They offer that course periodically through the year so I would stay in touch with them if I were you. You can like them on social media or follow them and that will show you or sign up for emails that will tell you when they're going to offer that course again. Some of the best information that I got from the course was where to find the people to help me. I love to write, but I know that I am not a professional editor and I didn't want this labor of love to get put on the shelves and have mistakes in it and things I just didn't notice. And truthfully, I'm not trained in professional editing. So the course suggested hiring people from Fiverr or Upwork. I looked on Fiverr and immediately knew that was the place for me. I found the best editor and I'll talk about that in a little bit. I also found somebody to do this great cover, okay? I did send her a picture of what I wanted and gave her an idea of the color scheme, but she did the rest and it only took 24 hours to get that picture back. And then I also found somebody who could format the book for me. You can find tutorials to do that kind of thing, but I don't want to hassle with that. It was like, I'll, I'll get into the pricing later, but it was less than $100 to have the book formatted. So to me, that is definitely worth it. The other thing that Hay House suggested that I also did was file for copyright on my book. And I'll talk to you about that too, how much it costs, and of course, what you need to do in order to get your book copyrighted. Otherwise, anybody could take your book and sell it as their own, and you don't want that to happen. They also suggested getting domain names, and you can go to, I think it's called Domain Daddy or something like that. I did not do that but you can look and I'll show you a link for that too, how to get the do domain name for your own name if you wanted to do that, or if you use a name that's other than your own. This is not my last name, by the way. However, they do let you use your, your legal name as the copyrighted owner, but then you can use whatever name you wanted to as the author, so. All right, grab a cup of coffee and I'll go over all the details and let you know exactly what you need to do to self-publish your own book. I paid $39.50 for this cover and it also included this picture that you're seeing in the background. I loved working with this artist. She of course is a freelance artist just like everyone else on Fiverr. They're all freelance, they don't work for Fiverr. However, there is a rating system so make sure that you read the reviews. I selected people who had five stars. She had a number of covers on Fiverr to look at and see her previous work. I thought she did a fantastic job. She lives in Pakistan, so we did have a few days in between because her night is my day and so forth, but she was really amazing to work with. And so is the formatter. This person is from England, the person who did the formatting. That came back within 24 hours. However, there was an issue, and I'll show it to you later. It's not because of the freelance person who did the formatting. Honestly, it was my mistake, but I will show you so that you can be warned and you won't make the same mistake that I did. The editing is by far the most expensive cost of self-publishing. I paid $835 for the editing. He does work in sections, so you don't have to send the entire book to him at once. Again, he had five-star reviews, and he was very easy to work with. 
He would return the book to me with the margins having the corrections in them. I felt like he was extremely thorough. He offers three levels of editing. So you can have a like a minimal type of editing that just removes typos. I chose the second level of editing, but he also offers content editing. So if you're not completely convinced that your writing skills are ready for publishing, he will also help you in terms of editing the content as well. Of course, that's more expensive, but you may find that you're, it's worth it to do that and have a professional editor actually help you out with the content as well. I paid $65 for the copyright of this book. I believe it took less than a month to receive the copyright. All I had to do was fill out a form and then attach a PDF of my book. Once it was copyrighted though, I had a couple of publishers contact me via email. They, they were able to find my information somehow through the copyright website and the fees that they wanted to publish my book, again, it was self-publishing, so it wasn't like it was a major publisher contacting me. They wanted over double. So you'll see here the total to publish my book. Most of these publishing companies wanted about $2,500. So it was definitely a lot more than the fees I paid through Fiverr to publish the book. The grand total for my book costs $1,000. $23.55. My book was 74,992 words. This is the copyright certificate right here. So you'll see here, I included the receipts for Sam Wright writes. I paid him in sections, so I didn't have him edit the book all at once. But if you are looking to write a book that's over 100,000 words, you are going to pay more, quite a bit more for it. There's something about the turning point between 100,000 words and more that gets a lot more expensive. My book was, I believe, 206 pages, so it's not terribly long. You'll see these are the receipts for the other freelancers that I use. This is the most recent Book Writers Bootcamp workshop, but they do offer these periodically. You could contact them and see if you can somehow get access to this one if you missed it. Otherwise, again, I'd get on their email list and that way you'll know when they're having another one out. And there are YouTube videos that they'll send you, but if you don't sign up for it, I don't think that they're published publicly. You have to be somehow on their writer's workshop list to access the, the content. They also had a Facebook group and that encouraged anyone who was writing. There were a lot of other writers who were leaving comments and pub showing their published books. And it was just very encouraging. So if you're a writer, just keep writing. There are lots of resources out there. Now I'm gonna show you a couple of things about my book that I wished would have worked out a little bit differently. But again, first timer here. I always appreciate it when you hit that like button, it does something to the algorithm so that people will see this video who would like to self-publish their book and are looking for advice. And thanks to everybody who's subscribed to Julia Lives. My book is for sale on Amazon for $12.99. You can also get it on Barnes & Noble. I bought these stock books. I think they charged me $3 a piece for them, but I wanted to take you through the book a little bit. I set the price originally for $9.99 and Amazon raised the price. I think it's because it hasn't sold that many copies. Truthfully, I haven't done much to encourage the sale of the book either, but this gives you an idea of what the table of contents looks like. And I made a little bit of a mistake. This title is way too long. Cocaine, implants, and step aerobics. Oh yeah, and the time that guy I picked up at a bar had a seizure. Yep, those were the 90s. I mean, it's an interesting story and in reading, but what it does when they print that title on the right side of the book, so they put the, the name of the book on the left side, maybe drinking will help. Now look at this. So then it just printed over itself. And truthfully, I didn't want to go through formatting and everything again, so I just left it. I should probably fix it, but I was kind of mad at myself that I made something that long. But anyway, it's one of those things that's a learning curve. I hope you found this video helpful. 
This is my book on the Amazon website. I was so excited when I was able to upload it and finally see it and search it in the search bar. That was really exciting. So this book is for sale. I will link it in the description box below. If anyone is interested, you can read the back cover. But just a little bit of an intro on the book. Maybe Drinking Will Help is a collection of interviews I did with women about their lives with alcohol. And these stories are real. I could not make this stuff up if I tried. I have changed names. I have changed details because I only have one side of the story. I actually, through Hay House, I considered using their self-publishing service and I actually emailed with them about that because in this litigious age, they have literary attorneys who work for them and they did tell me that it was acceptable what I did to just keep everyone's anonymity protected in the book, but it is a real page turner if I do say so myself. So if you're interested in stories of addiction and recovery and that sort of thing, and just stories about real life, you might really enjoy maybe drinking will help. Again, I do have it linked below. But if you're writing, I hope you have a successful journey. Grab a cup of coffee and don't stop writing until you're done.